Well, you are in for a real treat today. No, I'm doing the show anyway. You don't understand. You're in for a real treat. I am going to today perform my magic act. Now, a lot of you don't know this, but uh, much of my career was spent performing illusions for crowds all over the world. I am famous for creating the illusion of the floating testicles. Now, I know you think that's disgusting, but when you see it on stage, it's amazing. So, I will perform for you today all different types of tricks. I will astound you. Now, unfortunately, this is radio, and you can't see me perform these tricks, so I will describe them in detail so that you can get the full effect of how amazing my magic really is. So today, a special treat, no extra charge, you just pay what you usually pay, (laughs) which is nothing, pretty much. A special treat for you, Uh, no charge, no charge. If you are astounded by my magic, then perhaps in the future you will pay thousands of dollars to see me perform. But today, this special radio version of the magic of Ron, I shall astound you beyond belief. You will sit there with your mouth open and say, I'm astounded by what you've actually done here. You will see it come to fruition on today's program. I know, I know. You will love this. Just uh, sit back. Let me take you away to my magic land where everything means nothing. Where all rules have been suspended. Where things that make sense make no sense. Because this is the magic of Ron. (sighs) On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird. If you like that sort of thing. This will astound you. Whatever. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. That's astounding. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your liquid libation may be in the morning, and join us as we take a look at the world around us. As much as it's a pleasure to be with you, the pleasure is actually all yours. And now, here's your host, Ron Van Dam. I am Ron Van Dam, and this is the magic of Ron. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The magic of Ron, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I have nothing up my sleeves. I also have nothing on my shoulders. <laughs> uh, I am now, uh, and again, I'm explaining everything in detail because you can't see me because this is a radio thing, only audio, but I will in detail describe exactly what I'm doing. Let's get started. Are you ready for the magic of Ron? I am now rolling up my sleeves so you can see that I have nothing hidden under my clothing. You can also see that I have a wound on the inside of my wrist that I'm treating with lotion.
I'm picking up a top hat and I am showing you the inside of the top hat. There is obviously nothing in there. I'm sticking my hand with my rolled up sleeves into the top hat. And now I'm about to pull out a live snake. Thank you. It is a live snake, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. How did I do that? How did I do that? I don't know. A live snake, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Live snake, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, a little bit later on in my act, I will pre be performing the uh, floating testicles, which is uh, the signature part of my magic act. That'll happen a little bit further into the performance today. It is very important that you clear your mind. Most of my, most of my listeners have clear minds because there's really nothing in them to begin with. So sit back and remember that the only thing in the way of fantasy and reality is how you spell the two words. I am now showing you my bare arms again. My sleeves are rolled up and I have nothing under my clothing whatsoever, believe me. I'm going to do a card trick for you that I call the card trick. I'm going to ask you to pick a card from the deck, any card at all, at random. You pick it, I will fan the deck out and you pick a card. Go on, pick one. Right. Okay. Uh, what is the card? The Queen of Spades, you say. All right, put the card back in the deck. And I'm going to shuffle the deck. It could be any card in this deck, but I will pick out the Queen of Spades. Now, the cards are face down so I can't see them. What I'm going to do now is throw the cards into the air... And here they go. The cards are all over the place now. It's a mess of cards all over the place. It's a house of cards. But wait a minute. One card is laying face down on the table. It's the one card that didn't fall on the floor. Let me turn that card over. Oh my God. It's the queen of spades how did I know that how did I do that unbelievable 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 I know I am astounding you now here's a trick that I honed as my own when I was just seven years old it's called the blade of death. If you notice, coming down from the ceiling now, being dropped from the ceiling, is a gigantic blade, which could cut a car in half if it had to. But it doesn't, and it won't. That blade is dangling over my head. I am now uh, going to take a match and I am going to light the ropes from which the blade is dangling above my head. Once I light the ropes, approximately 30 seconds later, the blade will fall because the ropes will be burned through and nothing will be supporting the blade hanging from the ceiling. If I do not escape from these handcuffs and this straitjacket within 30 seconds, that blade will fall from the ropes and cut me in half like a bagel in a bagel store in a Jewish deli. Will I survive the blade of love?
I'm going to ask my assistants, Bob and Joey, to handcuff me. Ouch, Bob, that hurts. Ouch, ouch, Joe, that hurts even more. My hands are bound, I cannot move them, and I have no key. They will now tie the back of the straitjacket in the back, just like they do in the asylums. All right, I cannot move. I am tr- I'm struggling, but I cannot move. Now Bob and Joey are on ladders, and they're lighting the rope from which the blade above my head is dangling. Go on, boys. Light the ropes. Oh, this is very dangerous. And I will tell everybody listening at home, do not try this at home because it can cause injury or worse. It's not so much that you can't find a blade to dangle over your head, but where are you going to find ropes? <laughs> the ropes have been lit. I have 30 seconds to get out of these handcuffs in this straitjacket. Uh, uh, uh. I'm struggling like crazy. Sweat is pouring from my forehead. Oh my god, I only have 20 seconds left to my imminent death. What, what, did I, what am I thinking? Why did I even think of doing this trick? What am I crazy? I'm doing the blade of love in front of you? Whoa, now there's 15 seconds left and the ropes are starting to burn through. The, the blade is starting to move back and forth and I have not gotten out of the hand. Oh my god, now there's only eight seconds left. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Whoa, I'm out, I'm out. And the blade is falling on the floor. It's fallen on the floor, but I'm totally out. Oh, thank God. That was close. There goes the blade. There goes the blade. Oh, that was so close. But I I escaped. I escaped. I'm alive. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Blade of Love, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The Blade of Love, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. As if that weren't enough, and it probably should be. (sighs) My father taught me this trick. Uh, He himself was a great musician. Uh, He played the clarinet. And he said, Ron, someday I would love you to be a great musician as well. Uh, You can play the clarinet or the saxophone or the trumpet or the piano, whatever you think is best, but I would like you to be a great musician as well someday. Well, I misunderstood him. I thought he said a great magician. So I pursued a career in magic. I studied with the best. I studied Houdini. At least I bought one of his paperback books. Uh, It was about his life. It had nothing to do with the tricks at all. I studied with David Copperfield. Not the magician, but the guy who runs the convenience store down on the corner. His name happened to be David Copperfield. Well, it wasn't David Copperfield. It was actually... David Smith, but um, close enough for me at that time, that was a sign, that was a sign. As a matter of fact, on the sign it said David Smith's convenience store, so it was a sign. But from David, I learned certain, well, certain pieces of magic, like after the convenience store closes, how to take the toilet paper home and use it for your own personal use. I learned that trick, it's called the disappearing toilet paper from the stock room. I learned many other tricks from David Smith and his convenience store, but one of the greatest tricks that I learned is this one. It's called The Vanishing Balls. If you notice in front of you, I have two tennis balls. Tennis ball number one and tennis ball number two. I have two large cups, both large size cups. I will now now place the two large cups 
over the two tennis balls, and here they go. Now you know that under these cups, facing down on the table, are two tennis balls. Everybody knows that. But if I shuffle these cups around a little bit, what happens when I remove the cups? Look, the tennis balls have switched locations. Now the tennis ball on the left is the tennis ball on the right. And the tennis ball on the right is now the tennis ball on the left. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Vanishing Balls, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, you can do this trick at home, too. It's really quite simple, and I'll explain how I did it. I had two tennis balls. I said one of them was on the left and one of them was on the right, which is absolutely true. Then I put the uh, two plastic cups over the tennis balls. You couldn't see the tennis balls anymore. And I, and I took the cups away, and the tennis balls were still under the same cups. I just renamed them. So I said that the tennis ball on the left was, was actually a tennis ball on the right. I know. I know. I totally fooled you. Yeah, I know. But you think that was hard. How about this? <laughs> or maybe you were fall, fooled or fooled. Maybe you were fooled by the disappearing tennis balls. But how about this trick? I have a quarter in the palm of my hand. I'm showing you the quarter in the palm of my hand. And now I am closing my hand so it forms a fist. You're assuming that inside my hand is still that quarter. But I blow on my hand. And I open my hand. And lo and behold, the quarter is gone. Where did it go? A quarter can't just disappear into thin air, or can it? Now what I'm doing is, I'm taking my hand and I'm putting it up to my ear. And I'm making believe I'm putting my hand near my ear and then I'm pulling my hand away from my ear and I open up the palm of my hand and there's the quarter. It came out of my ear. Uh, uh, uh. Now let's try this again. I have the quarter in the palm of my hand. I'm closing my hand to form a fist. We're assuming the quarter is still in there. I'm opening up the palm of my hand to expose my palm, and the quarter is gone. Where is it? It can't just go into thin air. Is it going to come out of my ear again? No. What sounds a lot like ear? <sighs> Chair? No. That has a different sound. Let's see, ear, hmm, table, no, that doesn't rhyme with ear, well, what does? How about rear, <gasps> Ron, you're kidding me, you're kidding me, no I'm not, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to put it on my butt and now I'm going to draw my hand away from my butt and my rear and open up my hand so you see in the palm of my hand the quarter has returned to my hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. This is a trick that I was taught uh, by Houdini. Uh, he was a, a, great, a great man. Uh, as you know, uh, he didn't die necessarily doing a magic trick. 
he slipped on a banana peel. Did you know that? I don't think that's true, but that's... I read that on the internet in some type of conspiracy blog or something like that. Uh, this next trick is absolutely amazing. You will not believe it, and I will describe it to you in all its glory. It is the disappearing... I love to do disappearing acts. I know you wish I would do that to myself right now. The disappearing elephant... What? How's that possible? Well, let's see. Well, as you probably see that behind me is a large red velvet curtain. What could be behind that curtain? Boys, let's open the curtain up. It is an elephant. It's a pachyderm. It's a large, gray, trunked elephant. This elephant weighs 7,000 tons. It is larger than a large elephant. All right. This is very difficult to do, by the way. Nobody else does this. I call this metamorphosis. I call it that. I can't spell it, but I call it that. Metamorphosis, ladies and gentlemen. All right, boys. Put the drape over the elephant. Close the curtain. One, two, three, open the curtain. Look, it's a frog. I turned it into a frog. Well, that's only half the trick. Close the curtain again. One, two, three. Open the curtain. It's an elephant again. Ladies and gentlemen, metamorphosis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Metamorphosis. You know, for centuries, magicians have claimed to be able to read minds. I can read your mind as well. I call this reading your mind as well. This will astound you. You can play this trick on your friends, and I'll tell you how it's done after I perform the trick for you. Choose a number between 1 and 1,000. And now tell me what that number is. What number did you choose? 573? That's right. Now, you might think, uh, Ron, how did you do that? Well, this is how I did it. I asked you to choose a number between uh, 1 and 1,000, and you, you choose whatever number you want, but when I ask you what that number is, that gives me a clue as to what the number is. I simply repeat the number that you just said the number was, and everybody's astounded. Uh, it's a trick you can try at home uh, during dinner tonight, and I guarantee you everybody will just sit there and stare at you for the rest of the night. Uh, in wonderment. Try it. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Give it a big shot. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I am going to perform uh, the trick that made me famous throughout the world, especially in Honduras, and this is a trick called the floating testicles. I know you've heard of it. Many magicians have attempted it 
Many have died accordingly. Uh, the floating testicles requires me to take my pants off in order to have the testicles actually float in front of your eyes. Uh, so I need to prepare for that, obviously. But in the meantime, uh, I want you to uh, just sit back. I must now remove uh, my pants. And then the floating testicles will begin. Have you ever wondered how Ron Van Dam manages to sound so damn sexy podcast after podcast after podcast? It's simple. No pants. Ever. Pants are for suckers. You are listening to The Ron Van Dam Show. Pants-free podcasting at its finest. Okay. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? The floating testicles. Legend has it that way back when the pyramids were being built, there was an Egyptian pharaoh named Pharaoh Bob. Pharaoh Bob was revered and loved by all the people. Not because he was a great ruler. Not because he was a wonderful human being. But because his testicles could float in midair. It astounded everyone. They thought he was godlike. Who can do something like this other than a mythical being? Well, years passed, about 30 years, and then I came along, and I learned about the trick from Pharaoh Bob of the floating testicles. And I perfected the trick, and now I call it my own. Ladies and gentlemen, the floating testicles of Ron. Dim the lights, please. Thank you. I want you to, very carefully, I have removed my pants, very carefully as well. I want you to stare at my left testicle. Stare hard and watch. Very slowly, my left testicle rises all by itself. It floats and detaches itself from my body and floats in front of me in, in midair. I am now taking a hold of a metal hoop and I am passing the metal hoop above the floating testicle. The testicle now floats through the metal hoop, displaying to you the fact that there are no strings, no wires, no hydraulic equipment that aids my testicle from floating before you. It's astounding. And now, simply by snapping my fingers, the testicle floats freely through the air and returns to my crotch-like area. And now I want you to stare at my right testicle. You can't take your eyes off it, can you? My right testicle now detaches itself from my body and begins to float in midair. All right, that's it for me today. I think that's been quite enough. Uh, join me again next time. Until then, I wish you peace.